the paper essentially says your power has been shut off non-payment. I knew that we had just paid the bill a couple weeks earlier. This is the thing about being an expat in a foreign country and just getting there because I thought, what the heck am I going to do? Welcome to Rome. This is The Bittersweet Life with Katie Sewell and Tiffany Parks. This is The Bittersweet Life. I'm Katie Sewell. I'm Tiffany Parks. Talking about living abroad, expats in Rome. I'm here for a year. Tiffany's been here for the last 10 years. And in that, we've discovered the joys and the mishaps of um, living overseas. Uh, Tiffany probably has experienced more joys and more mishaps because I haven't been here as long. But but nevertheless, when it's your first year, I think you feel things more strongly. Yes. Both joy and like the woe of being feeling completely out of place. And I think you're more likely to make the big, big mistakes too. <laughs> the big mistakes along the way, or at least the embarrassing ones. I'm certainly having to learn to be a braver person, I think. I think that's one of the best things about being an expat, actually, is it pushes you out of your comfort zone and it forces you to do things every day that, you know, there's that old expression, like, you know, do something that scares you every day. Well, when you're an expat, you kind of have to, at least the first few years, you know, when you're learning the language and you're not sure yet of, you know, how things are done. And so I think that's good. It also has those days when you're just like, you know, I'm not going anywhere. I, I'm staying here. I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm not going to leave my house. I'm going to watch American TV. Yeah. And then read a book in English and eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> we make this dish. Um, it's kind of embarrassing, but we make this dish that we call comfort bowl, <laughs> which you eat when you need comfort of some kind. And you can get all the ingredients for comfort bowl in Italy, but it's expensive here. It's not expensive in um, the United States. And You'll be like, that's comfortable because it's way too healthy to be comfortable. But it's quinoa, which I don't know if you've noticed or if you ever eat it here, but it is so expensive it here. Mm -hmm. So it's quinoa, tofu marinated in soy sauce, ginger, uh, hot pepper flakes, and sesame oil, mm -hmm. all of which are not necessarily readily available. Well, the ginger you can get. The ginger, ginger yes. Cheap, but, but everything else it. is tough. No, wait, the hot pepper flakes. Well, yes, that's true. Hot pepper flakes, but the store, you have to go to a specialty store and uh, the sesame oil. Uh, so there's that. Then spinach. It's supposed to be spinach, but lettuce is easier to find. So we use lettuce. Shredded carrots uh, and then broccoli or whatever else all mixed together in one bowl with hot quinoa. So it melts the lettuce. So if that sounds too healthy, then we dump peanut sauce all over it. Oh, so of course, peanut sauce doesn't exist in Italy either. So we've been using peanut butter melting it down with some sort of hot something or other that we can find it's like tabasco sauce but it's different i don't know what it is and uh and then adding a bunch of salt and oil to it <laughs> and that will make it health less healthy yeah so that's comfortable so the, on those shut-in days you know when you really what about need something. adding sprouts well do they have sprouts here i've never yes. seen sprouts I, yeah you can get sprouts at um at the supermarket yeah. you gotta add sprouts in there that'll make it amazing okay comfort bowl so that's in one of those shut-in days i don't get too many of those oh but you've acclimated you're you're in your 10 so that is true that is true but nevertheless i do have my moments of being like what this country is insane <laughs> which i've been having i gotta admit i'm gonna put this out there in case you haven't noticed i'm starting to get kind of frustrated by this country is that because i'm here no i don't think it, i think it has to do with the fact that I'm spending less and less time with other expats, with the exception of you, obviously, uh, and more and more time with Italians. I, that sounds really bad. And I don't mean to mean that to sound bad. I really don't. But for some reason, <laughs> you got to cut that part because it's I'm not cutting horrible. it. Go ahead. It sounds horrible. Let's just throw you under the bus. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> No, I think I think it don't, it's not just about being around Italians, and that's the problem. I think it's th the more that I get integrated, is that the word? The more that I get integrated into Italian society, the worse it is. The, the, the less, you know, carefree and fun, and oh, I'm living in a foreign country, and isn't this great, you know, sort of a thing. When I, the first few years I lived here, 
I had a lot of expat friends because I worked in tourism and I was hanging out with tour guides all the time who were all Americans, Canadians, Brits. And I spent my, the majority of my time with them. And occasionally I would like be dating an Italian guy, but all my friends were foreigners. And I didn't really go in deep into the whole, you know, the bureaucratic nightmare and also the sort of political pathos that is here, like this, the horrible things that go on in the political system here that just make you want to cry. I just didn't, you know, I kind of skimmed the surface. I was sort of living on the surface of the country, which was really nice. And I thought, oh, you know, but it's better. You should get, you know, if you're living in a place, you should really like go deep. And now I'm married to an Italian and now I'm working in an Italian company with all Italians. And I spend a lot of time with my husband's family. And I still see my clo the closest of my expat friends. But, you know, I see them much less often now, probably also because I'm married. So I spend more time with my husband, which is, of course, what I want to do. But I think that could be it. It could be that I'm more, I'm, I'm more seeing Italy as an, an Italian would see it now. And I get why so many Italians say to me, you moved from America here. We all want to move away. And as much as I love Italy and I love Rome and it's just the most beautiful, amazing, historic, enchanting place in the world, I'm starting to get that sort of sense, like, you know, especially seeing Italy through my husband's eyes, who's, you know, a local who's lived here his whole life, how hard it is to do anything, you know, it's just like, oh, you want to get away. And so I think maybe that's it. So you're going to get away. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe we'll both be leaving at the end of my time here. Well, I don't think I'll be leaving <laughs> that soon. Uh, but my husband and I are, are like, you know, toying with the idea of buying an apartment. And, but, but we both kind of want to leave Rome. He, he wants to leave Rome more than I do. I really love this city. And I would like, ideally, I would like to stay. But it makes me crazy. And so, and it makes him crazy. So I'm like, you know, maybe we shouldn't buy an apartment. Maybe we should move to Emilia Romagna or France or England. And he always says, or America, which I'm a little shy to move back to America but who knows I don't know give it a try go it. back to America uh no <laughs> I don't know <laughs> why so, tell me tell me as as someone who's living in Rome now what are you missing about America uh well not too much actually at the moment but I'm also here temporarily you know and I think that you drift in and out of this love affair with it it's almost like it goes in a cycle. It's annoying, and then it's wonderful, and it's annoying, and then it's wonderful, um, just based on whatever's going on in your life. But for me, I, I have been thinking that I, I do want to stay longer, just because I feel like there's so much to learn here. I've met a lot of people that I like here, and the patina of it hasn't worn totally away for me, you know, and I'm still very much staying above it. Like, I'm trying not to know everything about the politics that are going on, and um, to not live life that way for a little while because I used to work uh, for NPR and so knowing what was going on in the news all the time was my job and my duty and so I knew the ins and outs of every little thing and um, I'm trying to take a break from that to find out what my own thoughts are beyond the news cycle which is something I've never really enjoyed being tied to so I'm trying not to pay attention so I was talking to my husband Derek about oh well, what if we were to find a way to try to make it so that we stay longer and for him, <laughs> who is a little bit more involved here, because he's the one of the two of us that can speak a lot more Italian, and he's the one that has to deal with going to the university here and studying and dealing with the system, which is full of all sorts of craziness, like paying to get your grades and not to get a grade, but to get your transcript of it, which you have to send to here and get snapped by this person and all these things. He's the one that has to deal with a lot more of that sort of thing. And so for him, he's wearing out. He's getting sick of it he's like you or he's tired of almost being run over by cars he's tired of people stepping out of stores and just standing in front of him you know he's tired of people not moving aside on the sidewalk because here they tend to walk shoulder to shoulder and you either have to step off the curb or wait for them to get past you uh Flatten he's yourself up against the wall generally yes he's just getting really tired of all that plus a lot of his interests as long as we're temporarily somewhere unless we were just to decide to put roots down he feels like he can't really get to work on the things that he wants to do with his life because it's almost like your life is on hold because you know that you're going to leave here. And so what do you want to start while you're here? That's, that's sort of what he's dealing with. Um, 
And I think that's manifesting in more annoyance with similar things that you're being annoyed with. So, <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, can, I can understand that. Absolutely. Except it took me 10 years. You were committed to being here. And well, he's already lived in a multiple foreign countries. So maybe he's had the, yeah, maybe sort of like up to his neck with crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about, um, uh, what happened this week because I was here at home alone. He was at the university studying in class. And generally speaking, if a person buzzes the door downstairs that I don't recognize, even if they look like an official person, I will not let them in. That's Uh, a very good move. Thank you. Well, what's going to stop somebody from dressing up like a light guy, right? Exactly. (laughs) Right. I don't know if your apartment's the same way. They'll just push the other buttons and eventually somebody's going to be like, whatever, and buzz them in. Yes. So this guy is buzzing my buzzer over and over and over again. I also don't answer, not out of fear, really, but that I can't really talk to them very much. I could say, I don't understand what you're saying, or I can understand certain little words here and there, but I'm not, my communication isn't high enough to deal with some official, right? So I just don't let them in. So he's buzzing my buzzer, angry, angry, angry buzzing, and I just didn't let him in. Somehow he gets in the building, of course. A few minutes later, he's up at my door, ringing my doorbell over and over and over again. I'm still just pretending that I'm not here, okay? Because what am I going to do? So I'm not answering, and I'm tiptoeing around the house. I'm like, maybe I'll go upstairs and read. (laughs) So he doesn't know I'm here. I said, oh, you know what I'll do while he's ringing the doorbell downstairs? I'll just, I got to get ready to go anyway. I'll just take a shower. (laughs) Then I really can't hear him. And then the power gets cut off. And I'm here by myself. He's still in the hallway. I'm watching him cut the power off, and I'm thinking, what could I say to him? I I don't know what to say to him. I can't even ask him why he's cutting the power off. I won't understand. So then I called called you in in a panic. They cut the power off, and you gave me the good advice that there must be a note somewhere in the building. Of course, it was stuck in the wrong place, so I'm glad I went and looked for it. Otherwise, I would have had no idea. Where exactly was it? I could never figure out where you had found that. I found it in the mailbox slot of my neighbor. And what were you doing going through the mailbox of your neighbor? (laughs) Well, it was sticking out of the top, and it was folded in half. But I also always look in his mail because our mailman always delivers our mail to him, generally speaking. I'm not sure why. So anyway, so I call you up. I find the piece of paper. I put it into Google Translate. The paper essentially says, your power has been shut off, non-payment. I knew that we had just paid the bill a couple weeks earlier. This is the thing about being an expat in a foreign country and just getting there because I thought what the heck am I gonna do I don't know who to call it said on the thing it said please call us to get it reconnected but there was no phone number so then I wrote a bunch of panicked probably poorly translated emails to my to my landlord who wrote back and said I can't do anything about this from Paris which is where she lives Luckily, she suggested going over to the rental agency that rented us the apartment and said, go and talk to them. Maybe they can help you figure it out, which is what we did. So many people don't use agencies. What would you have done then? (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. This is the question. And of course, they look, call the company and they find out that the guy that lived here before us hadn't paid for a year. Typical. So we had to pay all of his bills, all of them, which of course are coming out of the rent. How much was it? It wasn't that bad. The man must have never turned his lights on. I think 440 euros for a year. For a year, that's not bad at all. How did he do that? Because I spent spent 170 for the winter months. But are you sure that some of that wasn't his? No. Yeah, that's a hard one. So uh, I had to go speak for a class of a university. That's an American university. I had to go speak to them that morning. And so I left Derek this note explaining everything I had done, all the mishaps and stuff like that, and that he needed to figure out how to deal with this. He was the one that ultimately went to the agency. Of course, the, at the very bottom of my note, I just wrote, I feel like there's absolutely nothing I can do about the situation. If it's up to me, I'm going to be sitting in the dark for the rest of the time I'm here, you know, for months. So Yeah, it does kind of make you realize how powerless you are in certain situations. Well, and how easy things are back home sometimes. Not that dealing with a power company is necessarily ever easy, but you expect a certain level of difficulty that at least you know how to navigate to a degree. Yeah, it's true. I I take these things for granted now, but um, it's definitely, it definitely makes you feel vulnerable. Do you remember anything like that from your 
well, early years? I have to say that when I moved here, I already spoke proficient Italian. Not, Lucky you. Not, not fluent, but I, I spoke enough to, to understand. I spoke maybe as well as Derek speaks now. So I didn't have that issue, but I definitely had many issues in which I felt like I was being taken advantage of or I didn't really know what to do about a situation. So I've been there, but even today, even now, things things will happen. I mean, you're still a foreigner. It doesn't matter how long you've been in a country. You're still you're still seen as as not being from there. Mm-hmm. It's given me so much sympathy for all these people who come to the United States and start businesses that are from other countries. Feeling like I feel now, it almost seems incomprehensible to me that they would be able to do that. The family moves over from Greece. They decide to open a family restaurant. They learn English at the same time. Well, actually, not to continue being down on Italy, <laughs> but I think that a family from anywhere in the world moving to America and opening a business has got to be way easier than someone coming to Italy and trying to open a business because America for all of their faults, they are pretty friendly towards entrepreneurs and they, you know, they have their tax breaks and they have their incentives. I think a business license in America costs something like $50. I have a friend who, who opened a business there, an Italian, uh, half Italian, half American. And he said, can you believe this? American business license, it's $50 and they give it to you the day you go. In Italy, a business license, there are many different types, but the typical type of business license costs between 20 and 100,000 euros. If you don't have a big amount of capital, I mean, that's that's not even considering the capital that it would take to open an office, get insurance, set up a tax account, redecorate, you know, whatever you might have to, if you're building a restaurant, you might have to build a whole kitchen. I mean, this is on top of that. And I mean, who has that kind of money? It's very difficult for, in this generation. I think it was easier 50 years ago because there are a lot of there are a lot of small businesses in Italy, but they've all been around for years. There's very few new small businesses because you just get the life sucked out of you and the money sucked out of you. The taxes are unbelievable. And I'm not one of those people who goes around, you know, low taxes. But I think here it's excessive. I think it's even harder here. But yeah, it does. I mean, being an expat, the, one of the many benefits is that it does give you a bigger worldview. And, and, you know, you view immigrants in your own country in a very different way after you've been an expat. Yeah, and I think that it's just so common for people to um, treat immigrants like they aren't very smart, including myself here. I I wouldn't necessarily consider myself an immigrant since I'm not planning on staying, but if I was actually trying to integrate more, and they see it in the United States all the time, where they'll just sort of talk down to them in, in some way or just figure, oh, you know, they're working those jobs because they don't have the intelligence to get a real job. It's all about the jobs that are below you and let them do it and stuff like that. And um, it gives you the appreciation of, hey, these people are living their lives in a foreign language that they're in the process of learning. And in a foreign culture. Because that can sometimes be even more difficult to get used to. And yeah, and they're figuring it out. They're figuring out how to get a job. Their language skills are getting better and better. They're having things like their light getting cut off and they're having to figure out who to call and what to do. And meanwhile, everybody around them is treating them like they're an idiot just because they don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, no, it's true. I get it. I get it too. I, I oftentimes, like when I was looking for an apartment a few years ago, my husband, well, he wasn't my husband yet, but we were looking for an apartment together. And I was the one generally going and visiting the places first. And as soon as I showed up, and especially if it was through an agency, they just looked down on me, even though, I mean, I'm a well-dressed person I'm well groomed looks and like you have some money <laughs> at least you know at least enough to pay rent uh and they just you know kind of looked at me like who, who, who are you and I've gotten that many many times here and I think it happens all over the world with with any immigrant it doesn't matter if you come from to the Philippines or the United States if you're an immigrant you're never going to be looked at the way that uh a local person is looked at unfortunately yeah and in the language learning curve there are always going to be those moments particularly in the early years where you just you just have to admit I don't understand what you're saying I still say that all the time at least once a day I say to one of my colleagues I didn't understand you have to repeat it so don't feel bad please and I've been here for 10 years and I still have to ask that so it, that it just it, teach, it teaches you to be humble to admit that you know you're not 
perfect. I don't know everything. No. When the guy came to reconnect the light Is after it the we same guy? No, a different guy. Well, I don't know. I never <laughs> I didn't meet the first guy. I did look at him, but it looked like a different guy. Younger guy. He comes and I will give them credit in the sense that um they came the next morning. That's really surprising. Yeah. I was thinking maybe it would be all day. They said that they definitely would come the next day when we paid. Oh, I was thinking like a week. I know, right? But maybe it is like, pretty serious. I mean, you need electricity. Yeah, yeah. It's you not can. like it's not like your internet. If it was the internet, you would have been without it for two months. <laughs> <laughs> but we, electricity, I guess they're a little more. Yeah, a little careful. So he comes the next morning, and uh, I was waiting for him. And I buzzed him in, and I opened the door. What he rang the doorbell. And the first thing I said to him was, I don't understand Italian. When I reflect on that moment, I think I said it in Spanish. Because <laughs> <laughs> I we said... Hear it? Can we hear it? No. Because, you know, it's Capisco. I, I don't understand. But I said, mm -hmm. I know I said comprendo. Well, you know, what? I think that that's also an Italian word. Comprendere. You can say comprendo. It's not wrong. It's just not as commonly used. So there you go. You oh, hey, right. okay. <laughs> That's better. So, And he's like, oh, okay. Um, and he looks a little puzzled for a second there. Now what should I do if she doesn't understand anything I'm saying, right? So then he, he this just is looks... This the moment where if it had been a porn film, you guys would have had sex. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just come write it down and we'll put it in Google Translate together. <laughs> Over a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, he, so then he's starting to think he needed some things from me. And so he's... He just says, okay, Scala. Oh, I got that. I got that. <laughs> you need a ladder. Great. Sweet. And I said, yes, I have a ladder. And I think I said it in English. Yes, I have a ladder, which was stupid because I know the word for ladder and I know how to say yes in Italian. <laughs> um, so I went and got the ladder and he went out and uh, set it up. He was making puzzled noises out in the hallway looking at the electric box, which I thought was a really bad sign. He figured it out. He comes back in and he's dragging the ladder back in and then he says to me a phrase that I don't understand and I'm like what no word in there do I recognize and I'm like I think he just asked me for a pen I get a pen out of the drawer and he's like no and he by the way he's holding a pen <laughs> okay this is brilliant I wish I'd been a fly on the wall <laughs> and uh and he said no luce like light right there you go. i know you think it was pen i don't know well he used multiple words okay so i don't right. know why I thought, who knows why i was just like what could it be possibly be asking me for a piece of paper a pen um and so he just flicks on the light to make sure the power is still working now the only redeeming quality of this entire interaction was he leaves i say thank you in italian which was great Good job. yeah he's leaving and walking down the stairs and i look over on the shelf by the door and realized that his gloves were left behind. Oh, that was so done on purpose. <laughs> Back to that porn film. Yes, right? exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I got to run out in the hall and say, Scusi. And he turned around and I gave him the gloves. I think he said, oh, I'm so stupid in Italian. Thank you. And then he walked away. And then I went and took a shower and turned all the lights on and, you know, powered up all the devices <laughs> and all those things you do to rejoice that you get your power back. <laughs> Well, I think that under the circumstances, it, you did pretty well. So you should be proud. Thank you. I won't be, but I appreciate that. And I'm going to leave it at that note, because if you remember from last week, I was the one parking in the handicap parking space, which I don't want a reputation for, by the way. Okay? I have not done it that in years. It was out of character. It was ex both times it was out of character. <laughs> both, possibly three times. Three? I don't know. I don't do it anymore. I used to be lazier. Now I'm ambitious. Now I park far from the door and I walk in. Mm -hmm. I get exercise that way. That's just what old people do. You're just getting old. Well, and I also understand that the handicap spot needs to be open for handicapped people. But so, wait, we're leaving it on a high note with me. Oh, right. A high note. Succeeding. Sorry. Yes. You had, in, you had a conversation with a light guy. Which involved two words. Scala luce. Oh, in a and Spanish word. Comprendo. Also Italian. And you said C si and grazie and scusi. I didn't say C. Si. You never said C. Si. I said yes every time. Ah, okay. S you said scusi and grazie. That's better than nothing. Thank you. I appreciate that. Our next podcast will be all in Italian. <laughs> <laughs> no, but our next podcast, we're going to get into the darker side of travel. So stay that tuned. Will be fun. I'm Katie Stuhl. I'm Tiffany Parks. Good night. Goodbye. Good afternoon. Wherever you are. Mm -hmm.
We welcome your questions and your feedback. Reach the show by emailing bittersweetlife at mail.com. That's bittersweetlife at M-A-I-L dot com. Hey, it's Katie in Rome. Thanks so much for listening. If you get a moment, give us a good rating on iTunes if you like the show. And consider giving us a donation. There's a donate button at our website, thebittersweetlife.net. What little you can give helps the show keep going and stay free. Thanks.